Hey YouTube, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the difference between a chaplain and a pastor. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Oh. Oh. Oh no, I'm that guy. I'm that guy whose phone goes off right in the middle of the teaching, my own teaching. Okay, I have a funny story that I want to tell you. This is absolutely legendary. <laughs> what one one time I was sitting in church and the pastor was giving the teaching and everything was going great and all of a sudden some guy's phone rang right in the middle of service. Well, two women that were sitting in the row right in front of him turned around and gave him a very scolding look. And he shut his phone off and the teaching went off. And, well, guess whose phone rang about five minutes later? One of the women that gave him the dirty look that her phone went off. Oh, it's like, yes! That, you know, it is just little things like that in life that just make life great. <laughs> oh, wow, I, that, that made my day. Okay, sorry about that. Let me turn my phone off here. Okay, so the difference between a pastor and a chaplain. Pastors are called by God to tend the body of Christ. They are shepherds. Pastors feed and care for the sheep, guard against attacks from wolves, perform marriages, do biblical counseling, funerals, and about a thousand and one other things that have to do inside the church. Chaplains, on the other hand, usually minister to people away from the church buildings, to people of many different religious beliefs or no beliefs at all, in a very practical way, often in times of great tragedy, when something really bad has happened to somebody. The chaplains usually go out to do their ministry in places that aren't necessarily religious. They do not have a personal agenda, just the heart of a servant, and yes, Jesus put the song in their hearts. Christian chaplains follow the example of Jesus caring for people beyond the walls of the church building. Chaplain ministry has been around for a long time and was often needed when an army went into battle. Traditionally, legend has it that the first chaplain was a 4th century holy man whose name was Martin. Martin shared his cloak, capella in Latin, with a beggar. When Martin died, his cloak was enshrined to commemorate his compassion. The person who was the guardian of the capella was named the chaplain, which in English translate, translates into the word chaplain. The first hospitals were made by religious institutions. The doctors realized that there was a need to provide for people's spiritual needs as well as their physical needs. Since chaplaincy was born, it has spread and now it is very common to have chaplains serving in law enforcement, fire departments, and emergency medical response teams. People need spiritual care even when they are not involved with the church, especially when they are in the middle of a crisis situation. The United States Constitution does not allow for us to have an official, an official national religion, but it does protect our rights to have the freedom of religion. And that's one thing where society has kind of um, gone astray. They, they think that freedom of religion means freedom from religion. People also have the right to either participate in religion or not to participate in religion if they so choose. The free exercise clause in the First Amendment of our Constitution is the main legal basis for the existence of chaplaincy in the United States of America. Chaplains provide the chance for all people to practice or not practice religion as their own choice and in their own way. Jesus loves everyone. You know, Jesus loves everyone. Even the worst person, Jesus loves them. And Jesus taught us to minister to all people, and in particular, those who were considered the least of these. It is a challenging calling to give loving care to everyone that they encounter. Jesus also taught us to take action and go to people who are in need, specifically those who are sick or in prison. 
The very act of going to those who are in need demonstrates the love and concern for people that God has. Jesus is very practical when he defines spiritual care, like giving food, water, shelter, and clothing, and ultimately eternal life. Unless people have their basic needs met, they're not going to appreciate being in fellowship with others. People could care less about theology or good doctrine, even their eternal destination when their mind is on their present and physical survival needs. There is no obligation for the person being helped to join the church. Ministry is given without conditions out of genuine love and compassion. We can pray that by our good works, people will be able to see that our faith is genuine and that our God is real. Sometimes the chaplain really does not even have to know what to say or do. He or she can just sit with the traumatized person and pray silently and just be with them for comfort. In Matthew chapter 26, Jesus asked his disciples to just stay and be with him. When the chaplain does not abandon the person he is with or she, it demonstrates that God will not abandon them either. The chaplain has to demonstrate compassion for everyone by ministering with action first. The Christian chaplain continues to hope and pray that the person they are ministering to will open the door to share Jesus with them. Because for a chaplain, it's only when a person asks, what do you believe? that the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious great news of Jesus Christ could be given to them, and God can make that happen. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next video. God bless you.